Welcome to this short presentation looking at ovine pulmonary adenocarcinoma. It's easier to refer to it as OPA, or the other name for it is Yuxicte, which is an act which driving sickness. OPA is caused by a virus that infects the cells in the lungs. It causes tumours to form within the lungs, and then these replace the normal lung tissue. In many cases, the tumour cells produce too much fluid and the lung damage that it causes makes affected sheep very, very prone to pastoral pneumonia. And this is what you see. This is quite a, a, a severe case. This nice pink tissue up here is normal lung. This dark coloured tissue, which if you're able to feel it, would feel very, very firm, whereas the pink stuff is spongy. This is all tumour replacing the normal lung tissue. And in this picture, the lung has been cut across the way. And here's the tumour mass here. And this is normal lung up here. And this slide shows the fluid within the airways. So this is an airway here leading down into the lungs. Both these sheep are dead. And you can see the amount of fluid that's draining out. The thing to remember about this fluid that it's full of the virus that causes the tumours and fluid coming from the noses of these sheep when they're alive is a risk to other animals that they have contact with. So transmission of the viruses occurs from this fluid which contains the virus. So tiny particles coming from the lungs and the airways of infected sheep are sprayed out into the environment or when they're at a trough or licking at a feed block for example and then their nose might be dripping onto the, the food onto the block another sheep comes along and and those virus particles then infect the other sheep it can also be transmitted through infected colostrum and milk so anything where sheep are together in high stocking density increases the risk of spread so housing trough feeding the virus doesn't survive for too long in the environment, but perhaps for a few weeks. And similar to a lot of diseases, the younger animals are more susceptible to infection, although older animals can also become infected. So they might be infected as lambs, but they can appear healthy for a long, long period, months to years, because the tumours develop very slowly and they don't develop in all infected sheep. So it has a long incubation period. And as you can expect from the pictures that you saw of the lungs, these sheep can find it difficult to breathe. They might drag at the end when you're gathering them together. They might look as if they have pneumonia with increased respiratory rates and heavy breathing. They may cough, um, they might have a nasal discharge, but you can also get sudden deaths, and you can get sudden deaths before they start to lose body condition and that's because you get secondary infection with pastoral and pneumonia. When we look at the animals diagnosed with OPA that come into the post-mortem room you can see that in about half of all cases they're actually submitted for investigation just because they've been found dead and a lot of these sheep are still in good condition. Ill thrift and ill thrift and respiratory disease are the other main reasons for sheep coming in to find out why they've died. You'll often find that for some of these sheep, they'll have a history of being treated once or twice in the previous few weeks for suspected pneumonia with antibiotics, but they're not getting better. And that's because they have lung tumours. When you look at the breakdown of post-mortem results for sheep that have died of OPA, then we see a peak here at four years of age. The blue columns are diagnoses in tops and the red columns are diagnoses in ewes. So you can get it in surprisingly young animals, even down to five, six months of age in some cases, but they, they are very much in the minority. So how common is it? It's quite difficult to come up with a definitive figure. 
There was a survey done of 125 Scottish flocks in 2008, and about 12% of farmers that took part in that said that they had seen OPA in their flocks. In 2012, a fallen stock survey of 140 sheep detected OPA in just over 5% of the sheep. And then in 2014, an abattoir survey found OPA in about just under 1% of 3,385 cull sheep. Now, those were sheep that were going to the abattoir, so those were clinically healthy sheep. So that will be an underestimate, but it shows to you that the infection can be there and you might be unaware of it. So you can see the tumour here in this set of lungs. So how can you reduce the risks from OPA? Well, unfortunately, there is no blood test available for this disease, which means that it becomes important to buy in from trusted sources. But also, if you have deaths, particularly sudden deaths in purchased stock, then it is very worthwhile getting those investigated. The main reason would be if, for example, you buy in a top and he dies, or has pneumonia and dies four or five months later, if that top is infected with OPA, then perhaps you want to not buy from that source again. You should also investigate cases of ill thrift where there's no obvious cause, such as broken mouth. And this is, this is another disease where if you can identify lambs born to ewes that are diagnosed with OPA, you don't want to be keeping them for breeding because there's a high chance they will also be. Because if you can imagine, the first thing a ewe does to her newborn lambs is she has her nose down on them, she's licking them, and that gives the virus an opportunity to infect those lambs within hours of them being born. If you can minimise periods of housing and trough speed feeding, that can help reduce the spread. And you can also look at keeping younger animals separate, managing them separately. That could be your tops, that could be your ewes, but that becomes quite challenging. You obviously don't want to be introducing it via someone else's sheep straying onto your ground. And the other thing that has become more common in recent years is actually using an ultrasound scanner to examine the lungs of sheep to see if any tumours can be seen. Not a perfect test. If there are very small tumours there, they're there, they will be too small to be detected, so some could be missed at an early stage. And it's also quite actually difficult to see all of the areas of the lungs using an ultrasound scanner. In flocks where OPA is causing big issues, then in some cases they've put in place a programme where they scan every sheep every six to 12 months and culling out positive cases. And this is a picture of an ultrasound scan, and that's the, the tumour there. So OPA is quite a challenging disease because of the fact that there is no diagnostic test available. So it can be quite difficult to know how to manage it best. So again, it's a disease that you want to have. Once it's been diagnosed, you need to have a discussion about it with your advisors and decide what you're going to do. If you have any questions, please get in touch. Thank you for listening.